Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining the presentation. Uh, today, I have the pleasure of introducing you to Laura McGregor Falco, who is Broadcom's Head of Global Partner Programs and Partner Marketing, with over 20 years of leadership experience as a proven growth accelerator, and Roth Accord, who is the Marketing Operations Leader with Symantec's Division of Broadcom. He's a seasoned marketer with expertise in end-to-end demand generation programs. And my name is Deanna Ransom, and I am the Head of Marketing and Marketing Services for Televerde. So what I would like to do as we dive in today would be to give you just a very high-level brief introduction to Televerde so you know why we're here today. Televerde is the preferred global revenue creation partner supporting marketing, sales, and customer success for B2B organizations around the world. We're powered by a purpose-driven mission to transform lives and grow revenue for our customers. And we deliver end-to-end on the full life cycle of revenue generation from marketing through sales to customer success. And our uniquely evolved approach, business model, and best practices, along with integrated solutions, has enabled us to close $10 billion in revenue for our customers in counting. And with that, what I'd like to do is maybe ask Laura if she would please share a little bit about Broadcom. Laura? Sure. Thanks, Deanna. And thanks to everybody out there in the audience for joining us today. So a little bit about Broadcom. So Broadcom is a global infrastructure technology leader built on 50 years of innovation, collaboration, and engineering excellence. Our company has over 20,000 patents, and we spend over $5 billion a year on research and development. In our FY20, we did nearly $24 billion in revenue and growing. Broadcom is made up of 23 category-leading divisions, and we focus on technologies that connect our world. We have two sides of the business. We have a hardware and chip side of the business with leaders like LSI, Broadcom, and Brocade. And then we have a software side of the business as well, which is where I focus and Ross focuses. Um, and that's where our CA mainframe, Enterprise and Distributed Software Division, and Symantec Solutions are as well. That's awesome. I mean, Laura, what a large uh, portfolio uh, and, and complex business that you have there. So I think it would be awesome if perhaps I could ask maybe both you and Ross to – well, Ross, maybe I'll start with you. Maybe you could share um, a little bit about both the – opportunities and the challenges that acquisitions created for you and your customers. So Ross, over to you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Deanna. And thank you for having us. I think we, we faced a lot of the same challenges you see with any large acquisitions. And I think one of the main challenges that was really top of mind for customers was a really simple one. That's communication, not necessarily outbound from Broadcom to customers, I think we did a decent job of that, but rather an avenue for customers to communicate directly with us. That, that typical thing you normally find customers fighting for, please give me someone to talk to. I used to have my guy here. He's gone. Where did he go? Where do I go to do this or do that? And what I've found with any of the mergers or acquisitions that I've been a part of personally is that sometimes the simplest things are not always front and center. It's not that they're not placed as a priority, but not the highest priority compared to other things. And there's people smarter than me tackling a lot of the really complex problems. So I usually try to focus on some of the more simple ones. And with the complexity of an acquisition of this size, there's a number of issues that are foreseen with measures taken to mitigate or eliminate those issues. But opening up that clear, open line of communication that allows your customers to communicate directly with you it allows for more visibility into new issues that maybe weren't accounted for or highlights where more resources need to be prioritized or allocated to help with, um, with streamlining the, some of the process with, processes within that acquisition. 
But one of the real positive aspects, I think, when you look at all the changes is once the dust settled, it really allowed us kind of the, the goal for all of this was to allow us to focus, you know, who are really our strategic customers, what are their problems and what are their pain points that they're facing every day? And what does our strategy really look like to ensure that those customers are successful and that they're protected from every possible angle? Super yeah, interesting. So I, I was just about to say, Laura, maybe there's additional complexity around the acquisitions, right, For and the partner ecosystem. Yeah, absolutely. So I completely agree with everything that Ross just said, especially around the importance of communication and focus within our partner ecosystem as well. Um, and overall, acquisitions are a big part of Broadcom's uh, strategy for growth long term. And on the partner side of the house, it's really interesting as each acquisition brings its unique indirect partner uh, transaction model and a unique set of partners that come in their ecosystem. So really it's my job and my team's job and our extended team's job to determine how to best align that newly acquired set of partners into the Broadcom model, into our systems, and into our program while really minimizing disruption to our customers and partners as much as possible. So we typically see our acquired partners go through three phases as part of the acquisition process. So the first part is where Broadcom really rationalizes and restructures the incoming business to fit into the Broadcom model. Um, and the Broadcom model is really focused around simplicity, predictability, and scale. Um, once that's completed, we move into the, the normalization and stabilization stages, and then we shift at some point to a focus on growth. And the initial stage of restructuring and rationalization, that typically lasts about 9 to 12 months. Um, it's a little bumpy, but to Ross's point on focus, the net result is really a smaller set of highly focused, heavily invested partners that deliver excellent customer outcomes and really help extend Broadcom's reach and scale at the regional level. Wow. I mean, just thinking about, um, you know, the, the, your core customers, right, and then layering in this additional complexity through your acquisitions and your partner ecosystem, you know, I guess uh, I, I want to find out, and maybe, Ross, you can maybe share a little bit here on, you know, how did you land at selecting the right partner to power, right, this complex, experience transformation and maybe share a little bit about what you see as the benefits in taking that approach. Yeah, absolutely. So I think one of the biggest factors we need in a partner is when you go through an acquisition, um, there's, there's a lot of pieces that are shifting around and sometimes you need extra resources. So really finding a partner that could truly be an extension of our internal team not just from an internal point of view, but from a customer point of view, absolutely. Someone who's committed to our goals, in some cases, maybe even more than we are. Um, and tied right in closely with that is a customer experience. Um, I know pretty much any partner, any vendor you talk to, say, we, we provide great customer experiences. Everybody says that. Everybody wants to believe that. But who has a proven track record? of providing that. And of course, one of the other important factors is speed of onboarding. We always hear about the, the um, analogy of land the plane. We're, we're trying to fly this acquisition. We're trying to land the plane. So we got to do everything really quickly, almost building everything while it's in flight. So speed of onboarding and ramp up for a partner is huge. I think it's probably self-explanatory. But one of the biggest benefits of all of these is ideally in this situation, you have a partner who makes the customer's interaction with us through that partner seamless. It's the same as if they're talking to somebody internal, which as far as we're concerned, we want a partner to really be a part of the internal team. And, and we need it to be viewed that way to be, for it to be successful. Wow. Talking about, you know, being able to provide a seamless um, approach that really gives your customers that, that good experience, I guess that's a great place for us to pivot, right? And um, learn a little bit more, if you will, about what specifically did 
televerde bring to the table, right, that caused you to essentially to choose us? Uh, and what have your results been like? Yeah, absolutely. So for me, it was immediately apparent with Televerde that kind of going back to what I was talking about before, there was a desire, and not just a desire, but an expertise in becoming a part of the process and team, kind of molding into what we want to do and being a part of that and making it better. And it wasn't really just smoke and mirrors that, you know, people try to sell us on, you know, it, it, that one of those things that never really materializes after you're sold on it. But seemingly overnight after they're onboarded, they're on a first name basis with the account directors. Um, the majority, a majority of the account directors, definitely. And they're already forming those internal partnerships with stakeholders that are necessary to be successful. And the other thing that really clicked with me for Telverde was their focus, almost a maniacal focus, if you will, on each and every interaction with our customers. Every time you're talking to a customer on the phone, it's an opportunity, not necessarily always to sell somebody something. Obviously, everybody would love for that to happen. But rather, nurturing that relationship between Broadcom and the customer, understand their pain points and, and how we can help. And that's one of the things that I've noticed probably above anything else that the reps on the phone from Telverde take very seriously with their role. Now, those are kind of like the warm and fuzzy, you know, qualitative things. Of course, numbers are important. And I think those couple points that I just highlighted are really, really key to drive the numbers that you see. I know I don't need to read everything for people. I mean, the numbers have been really impressive to me, and I think the results really speak for themselves. And I think it's a testament, of course, to the strength of, of Broadcom's place in the market with our software products, with our teams, with, with the innovation, with the R&D we put into our products, but also how vital our partnership is uh, with Telberry. That's more from the customer side, though. I think Laura would be, do a better job about talking through that on the partner side of things. Sure, I, I can take that. So um, I'm lucky. I'm fortunate that I had a history with Televerity prior to joining Broadcom. So I had a, uh, a little bit of insight into exactly what kind of value uh, Televerity provides. Um, so at the beginning, when we first came over, we initially engaged with you from a partner perspective and from an enterprise customer perspective. So we leveraged the Televerity team to um, enhance um, and really create a faster response um, for our enterprise customers, which included follow-up um, through any of our web properties or um, contact us forms to um, proactive outreach to the customers helping to assist our partners um, with any questions they had coming over to Broadcom. So we continue to build on that success, and we actually built out our partner help desk, um, which is still going today, um, and a number of other partner initiatives. So uh, our deal registration process is another example of where we rely on Televerity um, with our partner help desk and, and, and servicing our partner community. Um, I would say, I would have to say that at this point um, in our relationship, the Televerity team has really become a critical part of our go-to-market, servicing the enterprise customer base as well as, as our partners across all of our divisions. Wow. So if, if I'm tracking with you accurately, I just want to, you know, uh, make sure that I'm calling this out. It sounds like Televerde or our Televerity team that we've really become a part of the Broadcom family and that, you know, our partnership aligns with the, the philosophy. Would you say that's true, Laura? Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly right. So the Televerity team really acts as a true extension of our team. Uh, I don't think that our partners and customers at this point even realize that they're not full-time Broadcom employees. Um, they've developed relationships with our sales teams, our partners, and our customers. Uh, I can't tell you the number of uh, positive feedback emails I get from our customers and partners about this team. Um, they're empathetic with our customer and partners challenges. Um, they provide an elevated level of customer service. Um, when they work on you know, lead qualification projects, they, ha they bring um, in a, a sales technique that really just creates a long-lasting relationship with everybody that they interact with for all of our Broadcom channels. Um, in terms of being part of the family, they're actually part of our team. 
So um, I involve the Televerdi team in all of my regular staff calls. We have weekly extended partner team calls that they participate in, and that way they're giving us real-time feedback of what they're hearing from the customers and the partners. Um, and they're aware of all of the initiatives that we're working on as well and, and can provide input on how to make things better um, or where we might want to um, make some changes based on feedback that they're hearing real time. So it's really a one team approach to our customers and channel without any of the friction that you experience elsewhere. Wow, that's awesome. You know, I guess one thing to look at the numbers, it's another thing to get insights. I mean, Ross, I would imagine maybe there are some things that you want to expound on. Oh, definitely. This is one of the things that I tend to focus on more. I mean, I'm, I'm in operations. I'm definitely a numbers guy. But the results are really to me and I think to our greater team more than numbers. I mean, you can see with, with some of those quotes, you know, really the value that the Televerdi team brings to our company and our customers. I mean, we could have, you know, 10 different slides filled up with these kind of quotes. That's, that's no joke. And we see this through consistent feedback, not just from the customer side of things um, that I was highlighting, but also the partner side that, that Laura was talking about. Sometimes our reps, our, our internal reps, our account directors, our partner account directors don't even realize they're talking to a Televerdi rep, like Laura was saying. I've, I've heard about that happening several times. And it's really neat things to see. And they really bring a high degree of trust and loyalty um, and through our customers and our partners, which is great to see. And it really at this point, and, and ramping up very quickly, our Televerator reps really understand our business, what our model is, what our go-to-market is, what our products are all about, which is extremely valuable to have both on the customer and the partner side. Wow, now that that is pretty amazing, and you know, for me, it's joy to my ears, right? <laughs> so, um, I guess I would like to ask maybe both you, Laura, and Ross. Ross, I'll, since you were just talking, it may, it may be easier to start with you. If you could sum up, I don't know, three key takeaways for our audience. You know, what what would they be? So. Obviously, the, you have the whole thing, the customer is always right, but you really need to put the needs of your customer first. It sounds kind of cliche, but I'd say don't neglect the simple needs of the customer either. Sometimes those, those obvious things you think are taken care of aren't always taken care of. And don't always assume that you know the needs of your customer at any given time. Make sure you have a solid process to set up a clear avenue of communication between your company and the customers. It's as frictionless as possible, like Laura was talking about. It's a simple way to make sure you're staying up to date on the most current needs for sure. So I would add to that, align with, your, with a partner who is a true extension of your team. So as I was just saying, you know, really having somebody that understands your business and isn't just participating in your staff calls, doesn't just have an email address that's Broadcom, but really is agile and aware of all the changing needs that are happening um, in our marketplace today, right? So business needs are evolving consistently and constantly. And finding a partner who understands what you're dealing with and aligns their business and services to your needs um, versus how their business or service is structured, I think, and, and can evolve with you, really is, is the key. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And the last point, I'm, I mean, again, I'm a data guy, so it kind of hurts to say this sometimes, but it's really more than about the numbers. The measures of success, there's many that you can go to. Most of them, people go to different metrics and numbers, but they don't always tell the whole story. If, you're all, focused, if all you're focused on is you know, number of dials, number of activities, MQLs, SQLs, pipeline revenue, and, and all that good stuff, all great measurements, it needs to be a part of it, absolutely. But I think you'll miss out on an important part of the picture if you don't take other feedback into account. Wow, that that's pretty amazing. So uh, I just for everyone listening, you know, make sure that you really hone in on putting the needs of your customer first, aligning with a partner who's a true extension of your team, and measures of success that are more than metrics. Ross and Laura, how awesome! was this opportunity to speak with you today. 
And so I do want to just take this opportunity to thank you both so much uh, for joining us and to thank the audience for uh, attending with us today and to invite the audience to please come and, and chat with us and learn more because at this point we are going to shift over into a chat so that we can hear from you and answer your burning questions and hopefully send you back into the conference with a little more insight. So with that, thank you everyone and we'll go over to chat.